Hello and welcome. This is Strophium, and I was toying around with something this morning, and I felt like it would be a good idea to make a tutorial on it because uh, the resources that I found for it were not very good, and even the tutorial example, the script that they have, doesn't even compile. So, what we're going to be learning today is the dolly zoom effect. <coughs> And this is originally uh, a technique that was developed for film, but it can be done with anything that uses a perspective camera. And for those of you unfamiliar, there is a very common effect that was popularized uh, very early in film, but it was really brought to major cinema around the time of Jaws. That's at least when I can remember it most clearly. And here's a quick, uh, series of videos that use a dolly zoom if you're not familiar with what it is that we're trying to achieve you'll notice that uh, very old school camera styles managed to achieve something that seems very supernatural in the way that it works and what's happening here the reason that it's called a dolly zoom is because uh, cameras in traditional film they are sometimes mounted on what's called a dolly, which is basically like a little railroad track that it can move backwards and forwards. And they also have zoom features on them, which allow you to change your field of view. So what directors and cameramen can do is they can combine these features and maintain the perspective on their target while dollying backwards zooming in or dollying forward and zooming out. And the effect is you get this really large stretching of the background and the foreground while keeping the target in focus. And this can be a very powerful tool for games because it can allow you a lot of manipulation of the environment, or rather the perspective of the, of the environment without actually changing anything that's going on in the game. So you don't have to manipulate your physics or math or anything like that. So, Going from film to Unity, <clears throat> I have a simple little scene set up. It's just a stack of blocks. And our target is going to be this blue block in the middle. So uh, if you just start up a scene, you can throw as many blocks in as you want. It doesn't really matter. It's just to maintain some degree of perspective. So that way we can make sure it's working. So we want to grab our camera script. And we want to add a dolly zoom script to it. You can just make a script and throw it on. Uh, I, it's literally just an empty script right now, so we're starting from scratch. <clears throat> so since we're calling it Dolly Zoom, we're going to approach it the same way that they did in film. And we're going to start by creating a Dolly effect, and then we're going to create a Zoom effect that piggybacks off of that. <clears throat> so just getting started, we want to make sure that whatever object we're putting this on that we have a camera. So we're going to say that we want to require a component of type camera. Luckily, Unity gives us these nice little attributes that we can add to our classes. So that this makes it so we cannot compile our scripts unless the object that we have this attached to also has a camera script on it. So that's really nice. And we're also going to we're going to create a local variable called camera, and this is going to store that camera that we know we're going to have to have. So in private void awake, we're simply going to uh, create an initialize method, which is going to, oh my goodness. There we go. Autocorrect is the bane of my existence today. Okay, so on initialize, what we're going to say is camera equals get component camera. Oh. And we can throw in a debug assert camera doesn't equal no. So all we're doing is we're just grabbing the camera that we know we have, and we're asserting that that camera is not null. This may seem a little redundant, but you can change components at runtime, so we just want to make sure that never happens. And you can think of uh, debug assert statements as effectively free because they get compiled out in release mode. So 
using them liberally in your code is always very good because it gives you a lot more informative crash information. Because say somewhere down the line, we have a script that removes the camera component of this, and then we wind up with a null pointer exception. We don't know when or where, it, why it happens. So he will get the ex exception as soon as we try to grab it and it's null. <sighs> and that's all we have to do for the camera. But what we also want to do now is uh, set up our dolly effect. So to do that, we need a target. And we're going to expose that in the inspector. And uh, this may look a little weird. A lot of Unity tutorials will just have you expose variables as public so they'll show up in the inspector. I think that's bad practice just from a general computer science standpoint, just code design in general. Uh, if it doesn't have to be public, don't make it public. And since we're allowed to manually serialize fields, I prefer having private fields that I serialize just so that way other scripts can't directly access it unless I allow it. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is in update, We're going to translate our camera back and forward along an imaginary dolly. Transform, translate, and we're going to grab vertical axis. And we're going to either move forward or backwards based off of that axis. So we're going to multiply it by vector 3 dot forward. And we're going to do it based off of delta time. And we're going to do it based off of some dolly speed. And we might as well specify this as well. Dolly speed. And we'll just default it to something like 5. It's kind of arbitrary. Pick what you like. <clears throat> and that is all we need for the dolly effect. So we can just go into the script. We should see that these values update. We're going to drag in our targets, even though we're not using it right now, just for the sake of due diligence. And when I press up or down, W or S, you can see we're dollying. We're just moving backwards and forwards on the Z axis. And we get the normal perspective change that we would expect. Uh, everything remains what we expect to be the same size. We see more of the side faces and less of the front faces. And you can see how our target is shrinking and growing, just like we would expect for a normal perspective. What we want to do is we want to mess with this. So that way when we're zooming in, our frustum height stays effectively the same relative to our square. So it will stay the same size relatively, and everything else will sort of bend around making sure that happens. So to do that, we need a, a couple helper methods. <clears throat> what we want to do is we want to be able to calculate the frustum height based off of a given distance from target. We want to be able to compute a field of view for the camera based off of the frustum height and based off of the distance from target. So we're going to throw in those methods now. Private float compute frustum height. And private float compute field of view. And float height, float distance. These are the values that we're going to deal with. <clears throat> OK. Bear with me for one second. And we need a few other initial values. Actually, we just need one. So what we need here is a private float to store the initial height of our frustum. So what we want to do is once this script is awake, we are going to check out the situation. We're going to make sure we know what the height of the frustum is, and we're going to try to maintain that. 
So if we go back to initialize, we're going to add more logic here for startup. So we're going to get the distance from our current target. And then we're going to compute our initial frost and height. So how do we compute frustum height? Uh, I sort of put these here logically initially, and I reapproach them later because I wanted to address this involves some trigonometry. So if you guys are watching this and you don't understand trigonometry, you haven't taken that class in school yet, or you're not interested in it, you don't have to worry about it. Um, I'm going to give you the equation to make it work, and I'm going to try to explain it a little bit along the way. So you can understand sort of at a high level what's happening, uh, rather than getting into the nitty gritty of what a tangent or what an arc tangent is. <clears throat> so as we're zooming in and out, we're going to need to, co to compensate our zoom to make sure that the target remains the same size. And you can imagine a view frustum them like a pyramid with the top ch chopped off. The small part of that pyramid with the top chopped off is our near plane. That's the closest uh, point in space that we can see something. The bottom of the pyramid is the far plane. That is the farthest thing in the world that we can see. And the lines that connect those corners of the near and far plane, that is uh, our field of view. So what we have to... Uh, keep in mind with this dolly zoom effect is we want to be retaining the same mass of that the inside of that view for them. So as we're squishing it, we want to expand it. As we're raising it, we want to squish it from the sides. So uh, you can think of it like uh, everything around us, 360 degrees, is a, a pie that we have. And our field of view is a slice of pie that we want to get. And when we're dealing with circles and sections of circles, uh, computing field of view on those is basically dealing with angles on circles, which you're going to have to use trigonometry to get. And the easiest way to do that is doing what I'm going to show you. So here's the equation. Uh, we're going to return two times the distance of the target times the tangent of the camera's field of view over 2, or times 0 0.5, times, and uh, this is going to, the field of view over 2 is going to give us a value in degrees, but we want to compute the tangent in radians. So we're just going to convert that deg to rad. So this will give us the height of that frustum. And now we want to be able to compute the field of view based off of the frustum height. So we simply do turn 2 times the arc tangent of the height over 2 divided by distance. And this is going to give us a value in radians, and we want to convert that to degrees. What did I do? Oh, two Fs. There we go. So now, uh, all we've really done so far is we've added this initial frustum height value. So we have a target, we're using that target to get a distance, and then we're using the distance to compute an initial frustum height. Uh, and this is just for our benefit. We're not changing anything in game yet. But what we're going to do is we're going to use this initial frustum height to determine our zoom based off of our, our dolly. So here's where we tie everything in, in together. So we're going to compute our current distance after we do a dolly. So we're just computing distance between our position and the target. Simple, simple. And now we want to grab that camera that we got at the beginning, 
and we want to set its field of view to something. And we're just going to set it to the value that we compute, compute field of view from the initial frustum height and our current distance. So, okay, just a quick overview of this. I know this is kind of a lot, uh, just because it involves some transcendental math and terms you guys might not be familiar with. Uh, at the beginning, we grab a camera, the camera that we know we're supposed to have. We take our target, which we specified in the inspector, and we compute a distance from that. Based off of that distance, we compute what our initial frustum height is, and then we cache that for later. And then at every update, what we're doing is we're moving the camera physically if we're doing an input. And then we're checking our new current distance uh, from the target. And based off of how far we are, we're going to adjust our field of view to make sure it stays the same size. So we have the dolly here and we have the zoom here. Together, we get the dolly zoom effect. And if we did this correctly, we should get some really neat stuff happening. So you saw how it worked before, how when I zoomed in, uh, it just looked like I was a, a person sort of moving through this world. Now when I zoom in, everything sort of stretches and you get this very large, weird deepening effect. And the, furthermore, going out, everything seems to flatten almost as if I'm losing my perspective and I'm gaining way too much perspective when I go forward. It's very, very trippy. And obviously you can go too far. You could also add a cap in here so that you don't go past the position of the target, but we're not gonna bother with that right now. Notice how things that are in the near plane are getting just zoomed out way too fast. And then as I'm approaching things in the middle, uh, they just get stretched out and they don't look normal anymore. And things in the far plane, those are just way out there. And you can see in the scene, this is what's actually here. This is, this is the trippy thing. There's our camera position. Here's everything here. Nothing has changed in the world. All we're changing is perspective. And that's the really, really cool thing is you can get really weird stuff happening without affecting anything. All this stuff is happening inside the camera. You can see here along the side, all we're changing is the field of view and the Z position on the camera. And we're just doing these things inversely at a set ratio so that this guy is not changing size. That's all this does. And it's honestly one of the most amazing effects I've seen for such little cost. Anyway, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you gained something from this. And feel free to uh, like and subscribe.